a madhouse. You should see the my department. It's noisy and philosophy. It's quiet as a church. All you hear is the sound of brains groping. <laughs> Where's your class? Um, uh, lecture hall one. This way. This way. Well. <laughs> Good to have you back, Barb. Let's talk later. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, my God. Welcome. Well, well, this is curious. You know that usually humans are appalled by the lemmings' impulse to destroy themselves in large numbers. And yet here you are. So many of you have come to endure a similar, but I assure you, not such pleasant fate. <laughs> now, the rumors you may have heard that I am an easy grader, or that my class is a barrel of fun, started by me in order to ensure my job. <laughs> the fact is, I would not be giving any A's in this class. And the B's will be limited to those students who are willing to die for Elliot, Zachary, and the beloved Anthony Trump. The requirements in this class are seven major novels and one 2,500-word paper per week. Don't be shy. I assure you, I will not feel hurt if you feel as though you've made a mistake this morning. Hmm? <clears throat> now, this is far more manageable, isn't it? <sighs> Let this be a lesson as to how language can be abused. Okay. 
everything I have just told them is a lie. However, when they learn the truth in the future, they will get over the hurt by having the sure satisfaction that this experience has better prepared them for life. Now I'm going to give you the real reading list. Only five major novels per week. Oh. 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 oh, I'm sure even in immature minds such as yours can come up with a few better examples. Ah, oh, Barbara! Oh, Marvin! Slouching toward Bethlehem, eh? Oh, yes. <laughs> Have a productive sabbatical? Yes, very. Relaxing, too. Brother! As Santanyana said, there is no cure for birth or death save to enjoy the interval. <laughs> <laughs> you and your Santayana, of all the writers who are not read, he is not read the most. <laughs> I heard you only cut your class by half this morning. Losing a touch? <laughs> no, it seems that my absence made their hearts grow fonder. <laughs> Perhaps you should think of taking a little time off, Marvin. Oh, in my humble estimation, I really think I am needed here. You must concede, Barbara, I do maintain a certain academic standard. Nothing against you personally, but very often honors will go to the more, shall we say, colorful personalities when in fact they are not completely deserved. Oh, Marvin, I agree with you completely. These little boons to our ego are nothing if they are not the measure by which those who don't get them insist that they are the exception that proves the rule. Hmm? <laughs> what was that? Now it feels like you're really back. I don't mean you. I mean Marvin. <laughs> the uh, the man with a doctoral broomstick where his final column might be. Uh, you don't have to worry about him anymore. Are you reading my mail? Well, somebody has to. How else can we sustain the irony of your being the last to find out? It says that the department is going to recommend that you be considered for tenure. What? Owing to the high caliber of your teaching and the exceptional quality of your portrait. And he's out, PhD. <laughs> That's what Marvin's so upset about. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. Yeah, well, it would be. Except that there's this thing about the rumors. The one about the Longfellow Award? No, awards make lazy art. Sure, you're already lazy, so you'd make the perfect choice. No, I don't believe in competition between artists. Besides, who would say I was the best? Well, um, you, for example, have said so on many occasions. <laughs> Barb, no woman has ever won this award in its entire history. Now you're baiting me. No, I'm not. I'm only urging that because the Longfellow is so prestigious that uh, you ought to take it a little more seriously. Because uh, the rumor is that uh, you're one of the people they're thinking about giving it to. Do you have any idea how this rumor started? I guess I started it, but I told all the right people. <laughs> You are shameless. Well, I certainly try to be. <laughs> and if you win this, old buddy, ha, you're going to be the campus superstar. And reports all over you'll be mighty pleased that you have an irreverent, sarcastic, eavesdropping, male reading, known quantity like me in your life. Yes, yes. What? I'll be right there. What happened? My mother fell. She's in the hospital. Reports of my survival are greatly exaggerated. <laughs> you had me scared to death. You could have hurt yourself. Such a darn fool thing to do. If I hadn't forgotten to tack the rugs back down, it would never have happened. Mm -hmm. The doctor says you're going to be fine. He says he's seen worse. <laughs> How did I get to be so old? I love you. She just looked so frail. Getting old. Unlike us. Hello? Grandma, Grandma, I'm here. Hello? Hi, Grandpa. Hi, Grandpa. Hello, Hello. 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 Hello.
been to the hospital? Oh, Tom got to go in just for a minute. The girls and I had to wait in the lobby. Oh. And you girls go play now. Yeah. Okay. Come on, Tom. Cocoa Van is a lot. Cocoa Van again. Hey, Mom, I think you got that recipe down flat by now, huh? I cook it because your father liked it. And I don't know why you make such a point of it, Tom. Well, thanks anyway. Uh, crisis in the hospital. Besides, how was your first day back at work? Oh, it's great. Oh, and I haven't had a chance to tell you. I have been recommended for tenure. And there is rumor going around that I might be nominated for the Longfellow Award. Uh-huh. Right. Oh, that is wonderful. Just wonderful. Oh, of course, I can't imagine getting the award, but the university would be thrilled. You know how colleges love to have award winners on their faculty. Come on, Mom. Let's think positively about this. You are fantastic, and it's about time the world sat up and took notice. Here, here, here. You've deserved that for a long time, my darling. My dear, it's only given every ten years. Are you making some comment about my age? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of age, uh, Helen and I were discussing on the way over. Have you guys given any thought to uh, finding a home for Grandma? Grandma has a home. Tom means a place where she'll be looked after full time, so accidents like today don't happen again. Oh, no, she would hate a place like that. She'd never be happy. Yeah, but when she gets out of the hospital, it's only a matter of time before something like this happens again. Well, then we will all take turns taking care of her. She'll be fine. Well, the doctor said it may take her a long time to heal. Might be easier if she came here to recuperate. Oh, Dad, you're both too busy. <clears throat> oh, I don't know. Well, what do you think, then? Well, come and stay until she feels better. Well, Dad, I tried to save you from the live-in mother-in-law. You're on your own. <laughs> gave me the wrong list here. It says, have battery checked, get mother's medicine, and give George the grocery list. No wonder I didn't get anything done today. You had my things to do list. <laughs> here. No, it's gone. It's gone. Oh, uh, would you? Oh, God. Yes, please. Um, uh, the, the little place that... Uh, you, right. How could I forget that? You think? Irving's Chinese Deli. Oh, lover, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Um, what were you saying, Mother? You were going to bring me some tea, dear. Oh! I was just testing you. I you sit around in a wheelchair all day. Still a razor blade. Even a rusty old razor blade like me. Don't put your head down, Mother. Uh, if you want something well done, you have to do it yourself. Yeah. Good heavens. Mm. What's the matter? Barbara. You put salt in the sugar bowl. Why would I do a thing like that? I don't know, dear. But I'm sure you didn't do it on purpose. Well, I'm sure I didn't do it at all. Well, it's no problem, dear. I can always have another cup of tea. Well, don't look at me like that. I just think I'm some kind of an oddball. Can't even run a household. That's not true. Barbara. I think you keep a lovely husband. <laughs> so why did you say I'd never keep a man happy? I don't think I ever said that. Oh, I think you did. I remember it very well. That's why I didn't go to the prom. Barbara, what are you talking about? That was all so long ago. You see, you admit it. You did say it. You know you said it. And I knew you should have come here. You never should have come here. Never.
Is this house that all the mushroom pork and 14 times fried rice? Hmm? Hello? Anybody home? to do about Barbara, George. <laughs> What's the matter? You two girls not getting along? George, something is wrong. She yells at me. It's terrible. Well, I've never known two grown women who could live peaceably under the same roof for very long. No, it's more than that. <laughs> Haven't you noticed how she's changed? We all change, Lorraine. I used to be so skinny I had to wear two sweaters to fill me out. I had more hair than Ted Kennedy. I'm not talking about midriff balls, George. She's my daughter, and I don't recognize her. Well, I think she's at that, at that time of life, you know. She'll, she'll be all right as soon as the hormones figure out what they want to do. I don't think this is menopause, George. This evening, she flew into a rage about the smallest trifle that happened years ago. I don't think she realizes where she is sometimes. I've heard her talking to herself. And just the other day, she hid some of her jewelry in the drawer. I saw her put it in. Then she asked me where it was. Then she accused me of stealing it. You don't want to hear this, George, do you? It isn't that, Lorraine. George, how long have you known that something is wrong? You like mushu pork? Got a lot of it here. in this survey of poetry from Pindar to uh, punk <laughs> we uh, um, uh, poets have learned to write more and more about less and less until finally they've learned to write perfectly about nothing uh, you include yourself in that I include myself in everything as after a while one said <laughs> who cares what he said <laughs> there really was not very much to recommend him except that he was one of the more adventurous pederasts of his time as a writer he was desperately dull and as an epigrammist as we have just witnessed he was not memorable ah so where were we Any questions? Well, if you have nothing to add, I don't know why I'm here. Do not believe really, because if I didn't, I would not. Business. Oh, hi, Mom. Well, I'm all set for a big break here soon. Very good. <laughs> oh, last poor Hick. I knew him well. Except he used to smile more. What brings you to my neck of the woods? Just checking up on you. How's the thesis going? Well, what can I say? Working with bone fragments is a marrowing experience. <laughs> <laughs> Are you through for the day? Oh, I've got a class at 2. It's 2.30 now. Shouldn't you be in class? I already went. They cancel it? They make me so mad sometimes. That's fair. 
Get so upset, George. You have 17 other holes to redeem yourself. <sighs> it's gonna be a long day. So, what do you want to talk about? What do you mean? Well, the only time people ever ask me to play golf is when they have something to talk about. <laughs> Why psychiatrists are such good golfers? Well, I don't know. I, I suppose it's just menopause, you know, but. Barbara just doesn't seem like herself lately. That's part of her charm, isn't it? She's always been kind of an eccentric. Yes, but she's gotten so forgetful. What do you mean? Well, she walks out in the middle of classes. She's always forgetting where she puts things. Well, now Barbara's a wonderful cook. I don't have to tell you that, but... She's been making this same chicken dish about three times a week. It's the darndest thing. George, is she under any stress lately? Well, she took on a big load after being away last year, but she, you know, she has so darn much energy. She, I think she's happier when she's too busy. Hmm. Why don't you bring her around for a visit? <laughs> well, no offense, Jerry, but as much as she likes you, I don't think she thinks too much of psychiatry. But I tell you what, the college is hosting a party in Barbara's honor, and the faculty is all invited. Why don't you, why don't you come to that? What's the occasion? Well, Barbara's being considered for the Longfellow Award. Where publisher is reissuing your complete works in one volume. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. I think it's a plan to woo the nominating committee, but come anyway. You'll just see her. I'd be happy to. Personally, I think the nomination's in the bag. All we have to do is go through the motions. In the bag. It's part of the living language, Marvin. We can't all be linguistic necrophiliacs like you. Gentlemen, can we set departmental discord aside long enough to plan this part? I would suggest that the department is making a grave mistake by extending itself so far in Professor Hollis's behalf. Her unusual behavior... Not that. Ah, Barbara, so good to see you. I heard I was wanted here. The notion was so refreshing, I thought I'd come. We wanted to talk to you about the body tonight. Oh, to coach me, you mean? No, Barbara... Don't give us a hard time, huh? We are simply trying to profit from your talent. It's sort of a Beethoven was my roommate approach. Huh? <laughs> anyway, we feel if you know what you're walking into, you won't step on any landmines. Is this man really a teacher of the English language? What Dave is trying to say in this rustic idiom is the impression you make tonight will most likely be crucial to your getting the nomination. I know that. That's why I don't want to go. Look, when Richard Valk was Atlantic Monthly, he gave you some of the best reviews you've ever had. You don't have to say or do anything. Just don't offend the man. And perhaps she shouldn't go. Marvin, repartee is an art form traditionally practiced by those who have been spoken to. No one in this room at this moment is speaking to you, so would you please shut up? What we want you to know is that you can relax about tonight. They just like the personal touch, uh, rubbing elbows with the stars, as it were. Can I just send my elbows? <laughs> of course, I don't think we should ever mention the possibility of the nomination directly. Game. Well, the man is in town, like it or not. For us to ignore him could be to lose the nomination for you. And your publisher reissuing your work does give us a legitimate occasion. But there's nothing new. There's nothing Mr. Vogt hasn't already seen. Yes, unless you're going to start telling me how to dress. 
If you take much longer, Barbara, there won't be any point in going at all. is the crutch for those who can't take burlo. Just take it easy, honey, will you? Uh, could I have a martini? Barbara? Barbara! Hmm? Congratulations on the new collection. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, Jerry. Jerry Kaplan. Oh, um... I, I know you. I mean, I've seen you. You, you teach here, right? Mm -hmm. In the medical school, honey. Oh. Um, you like poetry? I like your poetry. I'm a longtime fan. Oh, Barbara. you know how my husband and I met. I don't know. No, I like her. Oh, hi, Dave. Doctor? Oh, I, yeah. Can I uh, borrow her for a minute? Oh. Sure. <laughs> Bye-bye. What do you think? Well, let's wait. I was beginning to wonder if he was going to show nobody. Oh, Are you all right? I will be. Barbara, Barbara, I'd like you to meet someone very special who just happens to be in town. Barbara Bipolis, which is both distinguished critic of the time. I am so pleased to meet you. You know, I'm quite an admirer of yours. Oh, this is a big surprise. I'm so glad you just happened to be in town. Oh, there are so many questions I'd like to ask you. I hardly know where to begin. Your uncanny and almost invisible use of sustained metaphor, as well as a rather brave melding of Augustan satire on one hand with a 20th century skepticism on the other, without once ever losing sight of your own indomitable romanticism, achieves a kind of mutiny of feeling over form that's so wonderful. Is that a hairpiece? It, yes. It's very well done. I would hardly have known it. Uh, I, they warned me that you were unpredictable. <laughs> I had no idea you were so attractive. What did you say you did? Oh, I've yet to meet the writer who could resist needling a critic. Fully understandable when you think oh, about it. Well, the trouble with critics is they wouldn't recognize a horse's ass unless they splat on it, too. Uh, Barbara, I'm sorry that you didn't get here earlier. The time has come to get Mr. Foote to the airport. With the storm that they promised us, if he misses his plane, he may wind up spending the weekend. Do you want to spend the weekend? Well, I almost wish I could. I almost wish I could. It, uh, it seems I have to leave, though. Mrs. Hollis, it's been a complete pleasure. Really, it was so nice meeting you. And congratulations again on the collected works. The what? Oh, oh thank you. I'm glad to you, old pal. If I tried that, I'd have my head handed me on a pointy spine. Well, well. I don't want to sound like an alarmist on the basis of one observation, but I think she ought to be tested. Look, George, University Hospital is one of the finest medical facilities in the world. We'll just run some physical tests, and if nothing shows up, then, then we'll have to persuade her she needs to talk to someone like me. Okay, how do we start? I'll set you up with a very good doctor here at the university. His name is Raymond Sawyer. Doesn't have much of a bedside manner, but if it's physical, you'll find it. You think it's anything serious? You know, George, it could be something very simple. I don't want to jump to any conclusion. Just don't worry. We'll do the tests, and we'll take it from there. Thanks a lot, Jerry. what you wear under your shoes before you put your shoes on. Socks. Look, I, I can turn the heat up if you're cold. Oh, 
Barbara, what are you doing? Barbara? Honey, come here. Come over here a minute. I want to talk to you. What? Just, just sit down. We have to talk. Now, I'm the one that asked Jerry Kaplan to come to the party tonight. He's a very fine doctor. Do you think I'm sick? No, I didn't say that. Then why trying... are you spying on me like this? Barbara, you know I'd never do that. It's just that you... You haven't been yourself lately. Your mother has noticed it. It you... wasn't my idea to invite her to come and keep an eye on oh, me. Honey, I am not honey, an honey, honey, nobody's keeping an eye on anybody. But you, you've been walking out in the middle of classes. Now, that's not normal. My class, you weren't there. You oh, don't know. I know, Barbara, honey. Listen, You're just doing calm, that behind Calm down. You brought a what young you woman who's not afraid to be your I won't touch you, but just sit down and calm down, will you? No, please, no. But Mrs. Hollis, when was the first time you had trouble remembering? It's been a while. Mr. Hollis? Oh, it's hard to pinpoint an exact time. You see, Barbara uh, took a sabbatical to do some writing. <laughs> That's what I told everybody. Actually, I, uh, I thought if I just took some time off, I, I could think better. I never knew that. Did you enjoy your sabbatical? Well, I didn't write very much. I couldn't seem to get my, you know, my thoughts together. I see. Do you have any problems managing the household, Mrs. Hollis? We've had an awful lot of cocoa van lately, I can tell you that. Probably two or three times I can over. talk for myself, George. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mrs. Hollis. What is the question? Mrs. Hollis, can you tell me all the words you can think of that begin with the letter B? Um... Beethoven. Um, bubble. Good, that's good. Now, can you explain the meaning of the proverb, people who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones? Um, you shouldn't move. You might get hit by flying glass. <laughs> that's very good. How do you feel, Mrs. Hollis? Feel? Physically. I feel fine. I just feel as though I'm losing my grip. I, I get so frustrated when I can't... Dr. Barbara attacked me physically. I've never known her to, to be violent in any way. Mr. and Mrs. Hollis, the things you mention can be symptomatic of a rather wide range of causes. Now, I'd like to run a series of tests. Well, couldn't you give us just some idea what it might be? Not until I see the test results. I will guide you through the process. We can start Monday. I'll go ahead and make the arrangements at the hospital, and my nurse will fill you in with all the details.
job, Mrs. Holler. Haven't seen you in a long time. Oh, well, good morning, Mr. Mailman. <laughs> you have a missive for a lady in waiting? Mailman? That's what all the little kids call me. A missive, huh? Looking for something important, I take it. Mm. Morning. Pooning your trees in the spring, Mr. Hollis. Don't want to ruin all that new growth. No, uh, building a treehouse. How many years you've been building that treehouse, Mr. Hollis? Too many. <laughs> Something from the Longfellow Society. Hey. That's like good news. Uh -huh. Always glad to be the bringer of good news. Well, so long, folks. So long, Morty. Uh, so long, Morty. I thought you didn't want this award. Peripatea is a writer's prerogative. Well, of course, everybody wants that. I'm going to beat whatever this is I've got. I'm gonna win this. Oh, life is good. I have to preface this by saying this is an area where it is extremely difficult to make an accurate diagnosis. The tests have allowed us to eliminate a number of ailments and or deficiencies. In other words, I'm reasonably sure you don't have thyroid, kidney, liver, or adrenal gland dysfunction. You don't have a calcium or B12 deficiency. There is no evidence of elevated FSH, the hormone associated with menopause. No tumors and no multi-infarct disease. That's little strokes that destroy small areas of the brain, which is what I had most suspected, but that didn't show up. Well, we're convinced you've been very thorough, doctor, but what, what do the tests indicate? Nothing directly. All the tests were negative. But we do have a tentative diagnosis. The result of this process of elimination, coupled with the behavioral characteristics you're exhibiting, Mrs. Hollis, lead me to conclude that you are most probably suffering from Alzheimer's disease. That's serious? Well, yes. Alzheimer's disease is a form of dementia. We don't know the causes. We do know the results. Would you like a glass of water? Uh, no, thank you. The malady is characterized by the gradual loss of memory, lang skills, social discrimination. The patient seeks the familiar and tries to avoid the unfamiliar, often undergoes radically changed behavior and personality. Eventually, even the ability to complete the simplest physical tasks, stressing, bathing, walking, eliminating, will be unlearned in kind of a backwards aging process. There will be times when you think and function quite clearly, Mrs. Hollis, and other times when you are disoriented and dysfunctional. Gradually, the lucid times will become less frequent, and the disoriented times more so. The disease is of the progressively degenerative variety, and there is at present no cure. without a shadow of a doubt that Shakespeare did not write all those plays they said he wrote. They were written by another man of the same name. <laughs> uh, well, at any rate, besides a, a few facts in the official record, we know very little about Shakespeare, except that that was his name. Uh, 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 for you. Isn't it said that Shakespeare was a plagiarist? taking his material from established age-old stories and myths. Thus, the credit we so faithfully attribute to him, in fact, rightfully belongs to other enlightened authors? No. <laughs> In Hamlet, we have a man who made a great impression on Shakespeare, but he came first. And whether or not he made uh, a great impression on all the people who were writing plays at that time or on just just on the one i said or whether he did that to a man whose name was thomas and thomas is my son and when he was six he put the red river in the in the car and and
you act like I was harboring a criminal. Not at all. However, I do feel that you are closing your eyes to a situation which is insupportable. Barbara simply left her classroom. We've all done that before. Oh, I beg your pardon. Mrs. Hollis wanders the halls. She has abandoned her classes on several occasions. She is at times practically incoherent. I must agree with Marvin. She is suffering from some sort of imbalance. Perhaps a leave of absence. Uh, you'd really like to fire, but you just can't bring yourself to do that. Unless she's so imprudent as to lose the big prize. I don't like your tone, Dr. McDonald. I would not like to fire her at all. However, it must be recognized that Professor Hollis is no longer capable of conducting her classes. For the meantime, a leave of absence taken immediately would solve our dilemma. Then, of course, if she wins the Longfellow, she will be given emeritus status. If she doesn't win? You are not doing her any favor by carrying her. You couldn't stand to see Barbara get tenure. You must be tickled pink about this. Get off my back. I find this turn of events just as unfortunate as you do. Sure. She's out of your way. No more threat. You can afford to sound almost human. Pretty heavy workload, you know. Have you taken her to the doctor? Lorraine, look, I'm taking care of everything. But I want to help. I know you do, and it's very generous of you, but believe me, there's nothing you can do. Not generous. I'm her mother. And I'm not sure that there's not something that I can do. The main question is, can you see what's smack dab in front of your nose? Lorraine, Barbara loves you very much. I know that. But I want to be there for her, no matter what this trouble is. Damn it, this is not your private hell. I'm her mother. Let me in, let me help. I appreciate your concern, I really do. Can I take you home? I have a taxi waiting. Damn it, don't shut me out. I don't like elevators. Honestly, Barbara, sometimes you go to so much trouble to be different. Elevators are here to stay. You can't turn the world back to free technology. You can if I want to. I'm not making any sense right now. I don't know how to talk to you. Well, then like... don't talk to me. Liz? Liz? Hi. Oh, hi. I thought that was you. How are you doing? Fine. Mm. Hello. Barbara, this is my tennis partner, Julie Myers, Barbara Hollis. Hi. I'm so happy to meet you, finally. Liz has been telling me about you forever. So, look at all your stuff. You're like me. You couldn't miss a sale if your life depended on it. Well, we've had it for today. I think I wore the numbers off my credit I card. I talk to you now. Oh, Brad. Uh, I gotta get home, too. Listen, I was gonna call you anyway. Can we get... You're gonna stand there talking to that slut all day. I'm gonna have car by myself.
is different. No two victims experience exactly the same symptoms, nor do those symptoms follow the same rate or pattern of development. As it happens, your wife's disease is progressing unusually fast. I think you need to prepare yourself for a very rough ride. I can take care of Barbara. Your family can be very supportive if you let them in on it. Oh, uh, it's a private matter. They, they all have their own problems to worry about. I'd like to recommend a couple of books, Mr. Hollis. You need to understand what you're up against. I think we'll give you some very helpful suggestions. Books. Something as simple as labeling things in the house with 3 by 5 cards can greatly lessen your wife's confusion at this stage. Ultimately, she won't be able to read them, but right now, I'm sure she'll find the cards helpful. Or suggest to her that she use some easy substitute phrase whenever she's stuck on a word like setup or what's you'd be surprised how a little crutch like that can help well that's what it all comes down to though. a few little crutches read the books mr hollis and bring mrs hollis in to see me every six months I'm gonna have a big breakfast this morning. How about you? No, just coffee. Do you want some sugar in it? It's black as usual. 
Well, the only difference between a grave and a rut is in the dimensions. Are you all right, Barbara? I feel fine. Do you want some coffee? We already went through that. Yes, I want some coffee. Just try to remember what I say, Barbara. Well, I'm not used to being at home by myself all the time now. I don't, I don't know what to do with myself. Why don't you play some tennis with Liz? She's been trying to get you to learn to play for years. Yeah, that's a good idea. I haven't seen Liz in a long time. I'll have to give her a call. Well, how about some gardening? You finally have some time to do some gardening? So that's a good idea. You are. Barbara, I asked you for coffee. This is orange juice. It's orange, like the color orange. Barbara, you have tremendous inner strength. You can beat this thing if only you use it. I'll try harder. Go. I'm running late. See you tonight. Dennis, here's the flower. You know, you got the coffee on yet? Yeah, I see. George. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. I hope this isn't inconvenient. No, no, no. Not at all. Good morning. Okay, I haven't heard you in a while, so I thought I'd just stop by and check in. This is a fascinating place you have here. Yeah, it must be. Quite a culture shock coming from an academic setting, huh? <laughs> you want a little coffee? Uh, no, I've had enough coffee this morning. Okay, thanks. So, how's business? Oh, it's, uh... It's, it's fallen off a little. You know, I, uh, I've had to be out of the shop so much. And Here, let me just give you a look. Uh, no, I... Just okay, little. okay. And Barbara needs this and that. And I kind of figured that. Well, that's not the only reason, of course. No, I... I think some of uh, my customers are kind of just covering themselves in case I... retire or, you know, whatever. Well, here, this, 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 this will give you an idea. Now, this is half the order these people gave us last year. Look, George, I can tell you're kind of busy, so I'll just jump into it, okay? Well, I knew something was coming. I'm just happy you didn't suggest a golf course. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I know a woman, uh, Betty Market, and she's organized a group of people like yourself who are taking care of a loved one with Alzheimer's. I'm not the encounter group type. It's not an encounter group, George. It's a group of people who get together to support each other, to share information. That's all. Can I have to give you a call? No, I don't think so. Thanks anyway, Jerry. I, I really, really appreciate your concern. I'm going to be straight with George. Bottom line. You can't run a business and take care of an invalid full-time all by yourself. And the sooner you recognize that fact, the sooner your life is going to stop feeling like the walls are caving in. I'm your friend, George. I'm sorry. I wouldn't be doing you a favor by ignoring this. Things aren't going to get better. Things aren't going to get easier. Don't wait until you've hit bottom to do something about it. Look, George. It's Betty's name and number. Hang on to it. When you're ready, give her a call. Take care of yourself, George. I'm here if you need me. Thanks, George. No, 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 not a... Not a big party, you know, just a few friends for dinner. Okay. No, 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 of course not. Listen, I know how that works. Barbie used to spend hours looking at term papers. Okay. No, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll make it another time. Okay.
Liz can't come either? No, Liz can't come either. I'm going to call the kids. We'll make it a family celebration. I already did. Tom is busy. Oh, listen, he's not going to pass up a good steak dinner. I'll call him. No, don't. And don't call Mother either. I don't feel comfortable around her. Barbara. We don't need to have a party. People don't want to come. <laughs> we don't need to have a party. to their dinner party. Oh, they probably had a better time with us. It's not really our group. Nobody else went either. Well, it is hard to be around her when she's in these moods. It is not her moods. It's her illness. The doctors have given her all kinds of tests. Everyone has proved negative. Tommy, no full well. The doctor said more than that. He's speculating. He doesn't know for sure. Tommy, you are not being fair. You ought to go see her. She always asks about you. Daddy. Daddy, come hold my feet. I want to do a handstand. Not now, Pumpkin. Mm. I'll come out in a little while. Now you go out and play. Can you believe how big that girl is getting? Right. Every day she grows bigger. And every day your mother grows backwards. Go see her. Helen, drop it. You're afraid. Of what? You're afraid you're going to get it. 
phone. You don't think that scares me too? I wish they knew more about it. But you can't let fear keep you away from her. She's your mother. She needs you. Hey, I, I, I can appreciate what you're saying, but... won't be a professor anymore. Fellow Society. Want me to read it for you? Mm -hmm. Mom, hurry up. Yeah. Here. Okay, it's dear Mrs. Hollis. It is with great pleasure that we hereby inform you that you've been selected as this decade's recipient oh. of the Longfellow Award oh. for Poetry. Sorry, oh, you won't take it. You won't take it. Very important award. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Oh, isn't that the real award? Oh, it is. This is going to be an award ceremony. Oh, I want to write a speech and I want to make it at the award ceremony. Oh, honey, it's enough just to say thank you. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. Oh, something I want to say. I wish I could stay and celebrate, but I got to get these two home. I can hardly wait to tell Tom. <laughs> Come on, girl. See you later. Congratulations, Grandma. Thank so. you. Bye-bye. Bye. You'll be all right? Uh, you can take that thing with you. What's the matter? Is it broken? No, it's just... It's, it's silly. I, I, I can't think with, with all the things you have to punch. It's just... Yeah, the keys are jammed, honey. Right? You want me to get your, your manual down from the attic? I don't know what that is. Manual? It's a typewriter, for God's sake. No, I don't I, I don't want a typewriter. I, I think better with my fingers holding a pencil in my hand. Well, you can't think with your fingers. Nobody can think with their fingers. You've got to try. I, You're never going to get better if you don't try. Now, come on. This one, you know, like one finger at a time. I, oh, I, now look what you've done. You shouldn't be trying to write the damn speech anyway. Don't do that, Mark. <laughs> 
Would you have a family member that you wish to place, Miss uh, um, Barbara? Yes, my my mother. I understand. I can have Lupi show you around. You'll find all the rooms very bright and very clean. Lupi, yes. this is Barbara. Hi, nice to meet you. facilities in the state that will take them. Why? They're very hard to take care. Mark your car. This is one of our recreation rooms. We try to keep our patients as busy as we can. B-10. Do we have a winner? Do you have a bingo, Mr. Choma? I think I missed the floor. Oh, we can take care of that, Mr. Choma, no problem. Wally, please. All right, take it easy. There you are. Now we're going to get a new car, and we're going to start a new game. All right, please. Well, these people have Alzheimer's? Ah, uh, yeah, most of them. Hi, Mrs. Hogan. How are you today? Uh, okay. Good. I'm getting a little tired of it, yeah. but yeah, I can still. Most of them don't talk. Some of them never stop talking. <laughs> they need medications to keep them from being impossible. But they don't seem to mind. I hope they don't mind. I think most of them are too out of it to what know the difference anyway. Hi, Miss. What time is it? It's almost time for dinner, Mrs. Boyer. What are we going to have? We're having lamb chops, your favorite. I don't like lamb chops. Oh, you do like lamb chops. I don't like lamb chops. I don't like mashed potatoes. We're not having that. I don't like carrots. I don't like liver. <laughs>
Hmm? I was worried about you. You okay? Hmm. You know, I, I sometimes get carried away, and I, I felt so bad about this morning. Oh, right. You know what I did today? What did you do? I, I went to a nursing home. I saw myself. Barbara, why did you do that? You know I'd never put you in one of those places. I won't make you promise not to. Well, someday it may be the best thing to do. Look tired. Have you eaten anything? Hungry? Hmm? Are you? Okay, <laughs> stay here. I'll be right back. You relax. I don't know which of us is worse. The one who can't remember where anything is. Or the one who got to be this age and never knew. <laughs> I'm Betty Marcus. You must be George Hallis. That's right. I'm Betty. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm so glad you came. Oh, you know, as I told you on the phone, uh, we have a professional social worker that runs these meetings. Mm. I just do the organizational things. <laughs> oh, um, uh, George, um, could I bother you to set up about ten chairs um, in a circle right over there mm -hmm. and in the middle? Sure, you bet. Right there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Thanks. Look, he's outlived all the predictions, all the doctor's prognoses, and according to everything I've read, he should be dead by now. Sometimes I look at him and I think, can't you read? Have you found a home for your husband yet, Joan? No, I'm still looking. I've seen 30 places, but I've got another list to try. I'll find one. Good. Don't wait too long. I think you're having a problem letting go of him. I know. I know I am. George, how does your wife's illness make you feel? Well, I... I find that I'm very impatient with her, and I... I, I don't know how to deal with that. I just... I just don't know how... I used to have that kind of anger, too, George. My wife can't control her bathroom habits. And finally, one day, I, I made her wear a diaper. She 
cry. I felt like the meanest son of a... But I never made her wear a diaper again. And that was the last time I yelled at her, too. George, are there things you don't understand about your wife's behavior? She's changed. It's not the same, Barbara. How do the rest of you handle this feeling of loss? Anyone? My husband sleeps. Three years, he just sleeps. I think sometimes I just have to go out and talk to someone. A man. And be... I want very much to be held. I'll say it, I need to be held by a man. It is asking a great deal of yourself to remain true to your marriage vows when your spouse is no longer the person you married. As if they're already gone. Hey, where does it say in your vows you can have a sweetie pie on the side? I don't know. <laughs> Should we change the subject? You all look a little miserable. <laughs> we uh, got a divorce early on uh, when Alex was still able to function. Sorry. Well, we were advised to. I, I, I don't know if you know it, but uh, insurance doesn't cover the cost of care. And our lawyer advised us that um, we would have to go bankrupt before Alec could qualify for state aid. And um, the only way around it was to, um, to um, anyway. Um, at least uh, this way we can protect half of our life savings in our home. It's terrible, Betty. I'm, I'm very sorry. We have so much to go through. They don't call this the beholder's disease for nothing. Wonderful 
Who am I? Thank you. I think the time has come to get a few things out on the table. High time, George. High time. I... I've been very foolish. George, I like a man who can admit when he's made a mistake. That takes guts, George. Lorraine, if you just let me say this before I lose my guts, I promise you can talk all you want later on. Okay. Okay. Talk. Now... I haven't wanted to admit the truth of what's been going on here. But I'm willing to do that now. And I need your help. All of your help. Tom, I need your help. Especially you. It's not going to do anybody any good if you won't admit that your mother is sick. Now, I've got a couple of books. I'd like you to read them. Either that or come with me to the support group. I don't know about that, but I, I will read the books, too. Now, don't stay away, son. That's the worst of all. Yeah. Now, you all know the Longfellow Award ceremony is coming up. Barbara has decided to make an acceptance speech. They're even providing free air there for all of us. I think we should go and be there with her. And here I thought I could get through my whole life without ever having to set foot on a jet. I'd say it's high time, Loretta. High time. Dad, Mom can't make a speech. She'll make a fool of herself. Now, none of us want that for her. She wants to do this, Tom. I don't know. Maybe she can't pull it off, but it's important to her. This is the moment she'll be remembered for. Now, you can't blow her whole career just because she's forgotten how to quit when she's ahead. Tom, if she wants no. to... No. Now, we should be protecting her if she can't protect herself. Tom, this is her last chance to have the last word. She can't go down without a fight. I won't ask it of her. Your mother wants to stand up on that stage and say goodbye. And I say, let her do it. We have gathered here this evening to honor a woman who, with her unique clairvoyance, has been able to give us a rich and compelling body of work. An artist who illuminates our times in a way that very few artists of the past have been able to illuminate theirs. I'm very happy to be able to present to you this decade's Longfellow Poet Laureate, Barbara Wyatt Hollis. Something to read. Look at the pretty. What's it?
My name is... My name is George Hollis. And I have the honor to be the husband of Barbara Wyatt Hollis. Barbara has Alzheimer's disease, which, for those of you who don't know, means that she is gradually losing all of her uh, mental and physical abilities. In fact, sometimes things slip so bad that she even forgets the words that she's written. But let me tell you that no writer ever wanted to say words more than she wants to say these few words that she has managed to put down over the, over the last few months. So, with your permission, I would like to, to read them. Our friend Dylan Thomas once told us, do not go gentle into that good night. And my friends, I have tried to rage against the dying of the light. But now my rage is long since spent, not squandered, not even proudly laid upon the bar, but given out grudgingly to a dark, unseen creditor who drags me into the darkness for debts I do not remember. Day by day, I feel myself sinking slowly down the funnel of a silent cyclone whose edges only spin me when I try to climb out. And so as hard as I try, I cannot climb out or scream out or dream myself out of this. I fear you have lost me as I have lost myself. Yet I am the lucky one, for I shall not know the end, even when it presents itself. So you will suffer for me. Nobody ever said life was fair. <clears throat> Don't be afraid to laugh, because it is the one thing we have that is ours alone, our one pure invention. Use it when you think of me. Do not cry for me. I've lived better than anyone I know. I've had the rare chance to say every damn thing I ever wanted to say. And people listen. And although I have forgotten many things, I do still remember love. I have loved my life, and I have been loved. Loved in a way that we only dream of being loved. Loved by my husband, my child, my parents, and by you. As laughter is our purest invention, Love is our purest gift. I would like now to return the gift. So all I want to say is... I love you. <laughs> 